What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Jedi Jive. My name is Mike. Joining us again, as always, is my sister, Jenny. Hey, kitty cats. We got another She-Hulk reaction coming at you, this time episode three. We've been loving She-Hulk so far. It's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Last week ended with um, Jen Walters taking on Emil Blonsky. Well, first of all, she got her new job, was offered this right. new job as the as a lawyer uh, in the new division at the at the enemy law firm. Right. She desperately needed a job so bad, though, so she didn't really have the... She had to take it, basically. But it's going to be, you know, she's going to make a lot of money at this job. And it's definitely an upgrade in terms of, like, she's got a fancy corner office now. And she has this new super hot paralegal male, you know, that might be a potential romantic interest. Who knows? There's a lot of things that could, like, go well for her. But there's obviously a lot of things that are, like... Ooh, and right off the bat, uh, she takes on the client. Thing like Bruce approves. She sounds it looks like things are gonna go well, and then oh, looks all of a sudden Emil Blonsky is now escaped from prison and is in, fighting in a uh, underground ring yeah. as abomination. And this could potentially be bad news for Jen Walters, but um, she's gonna have to spin this one. She's gonna have to put a lot more spin on this than she previously thought, basically. Yeah, and she's I, already said she's gonna take the client. Yes, exactly. But and ideally, like she's supposed to be really good at her job. So, like, I think potentially there's, you know, there will be a conflict in a scenario that's like, mm, but she'll find a way to maybe juggle some things and. Mm -hmm maybe quite literally juggle some heavy things. Meanwhile, we're still watching sort of the uh, inner conflict of having to perform, basically, yeah. at her new job. She's expected to be in character as She-Hulk yeah. at work in the courtroom all the time. She's representing powered clients yeah uh, we're also i'm also excited to potentially maybe see wong oh yeah because there's we know that shang chi be... crossover because we saw this little scene in um shang chi where uh abomination was fighting in this club yeah and wouldn't so... it be actually kind of like funny if like maybe even shang chi is like briefly in it that would be cool and it just I to have doubt a it but it would be awesome if it <laughs> happened right i mean we know that sort of anything is possible in this world so yeah and you know we're, we're, when you have Wong, you have, like, instant portals to, like, everywhere. Maybe you'd see, like, Ned in training or something fun. That would right. be just really Some cool to have unexpected little a... cameo would I'd be I'd like great. to have it. I know we're reactors and we're always trying to spoil ourselves, but I, you know, yeah. come on. Let's have some fun with some cameos or something. So but let's see what this episode has to offer us. Let's jump in and have some fun, guys. Oh, yeah, Hulk's on his way to Sakaar. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, I was about to say, this looks like a okay. crazy prison of some kind. Indeed. Yep. She's oh, she used to it now. She's way like, more confident. Now. <laughs> you understand that this constitutes another crime and totally destroys your chances at parole? No, because I was forced to leave my cell. Who forced you to escape this insanely high security prison? Ooh. Wong. Did Wong do it? Sorcerer Supreme of the Mystic Arts. And Wong just... He's either a sorcerer who lives in New York or a librarian who lives in Nepal. <laughs> Both can be true. This guy busted him out of his prison cell and probably ruined my entire case. No, he made it better, I mean, probably. I can't wait to see Wong. I get it. <laughs> I just want to make sure that you don't think this is one of those cameo every week type of shows. <laughs> That's the first time I've actually really enjoyed the fourth wall thing in this show. I like that she's not driving right now. Remember yet. whose show this actually is. <laughs> <laughs> Fair okay, play, that was Jen a Walters. Masterful Fair play. use of the fourth wall. That was break. really well done. That was yeah. great. Since it's been revealed that Jennifer Walters has a superhero <laughs> the called She Hulk, the statuesque green lawyer has been plagued <laughs> yeah. by public backlash, with many questioning her qualifications. Uh huh. The Hulk's band hood away, but then they gave it to a woman? <laughs> no problem with female heroes. Relatable! This, this is all so realistic. with Jefferson Coop. Dennis. No, what? not Jen Walters. Uh, we have too much history for me to be comfortable with her on the case. I would love to know what this is about and not work on it. Mallory Book is also in the superhuman law division. Yeah. No, I can't talk to a 10 about mm -hmm. embarrassing man stuff. She could be my next fiance. 
immediate sexual harassment. Right. But why the superhuman law division? The girlfriend in question is a shape-shifting light elf from New Asgard. <laughs> well, to be fair, I thought I was dating Megan the Stallion. Sorry, you thought you were dating Megan the Stallion? You thought she drove a Passat? Right, you see, this is why I don't want Walter. <laughs> There you go. There he is. Uh, Mr. Wong, great entrance, perfect timing. I really need to take this. Here may go. Everything Mr. Blonsky told you is factual. I extracted <laughs> him from the prison uh, against his own wishes because I required a worthy opponent as part of my training to become Sorcerer Supreme. There you go. Mm -hmm. oh, I know what you're thinking, Miss Walters. I'm not erasing everyone's memories, not again. That is not what I was thinking, and it's highly unethical. Yeah, it's also a very messy, believe me. <laughs> very well, we'll reserve sorcery for strategy B. Don't have your nose. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you going to help me or not? I'm going to start building your case, and I will be in touch, Mr. Bukowski. Amazing hand choreography. <laughs> I got a change of heart. I'm gonna drop the case. Wait, 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 just now? But at some point in time, you gotta take personal responsibility. What just I happened? This is unexpected. Hello? You there? <laughs> yeah, your jaw's on the floor because I drive a cyber truck. Security! Okay. Oh, that was the shapeshifter, right? Let that be a warning. <laughs> Is it true you were rejected by the Avengers? That was Jennifer Walters, also known as She-Hulk, rumored to have been rejected by the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are those your soulmates? Oh, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> so it's not the Thunderbolts? <laughs> In light of recent evidence of a prison escape, I think we all know how this is going to go. So let's keep this brief. We do have a witness who is able to clear Mr. Blonsky of any wrongdoing on his part. I have changed emotionally, physically, metaphysically, spiritually, <laughs> karmically, cosmically, interdimensionally, etc. <laughs> the man you see before you is not the same Emil Blonsky as before. He saved you from a bad marriage. That's it, Carl. Let it flow. Now the <laughs> I release you, Linda. Proud of you, Carl. <laughs> the uh, witness will explain if he ever decides to show up. <laughs> Just portals right into the middle of the supermax. Asgard is not a place, it is a people, therefore I Thor's have... inspirational speeches are not admissible in court. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely believed that he was dating the real Megan Thee Stallion. I must say, I find it hard to believe that Mr. Bukowski could be fooled so easily. Your motion to dismiss is denied. Some new information I've just received, I'm changing my ruling. <laughs> oh, come on, Runa. This is getting a little broad. Impersonating a judge is illegal. Get down from there. <laughs> this is very good for us. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mischievous. I gave him no choice. But it was absolutely his choice to return. These are not the actions of a criminal, but of a reformed man who truly wants to do the right thing. I mean, when Blonsky uncontrollably becomes abomination, isn't he a raging monster out for blood? If I could just put your minds at ease. Change into abomination right now. No, absolutely yep. not. Oh, dear. Emil. Emil, no. This might go poorly. Oh. Uh, well, no, I mean, if Wong had, Wong had him do it. No. As you can see, I'm in full control. That's enough! Change back now! Emil! Oh, calm down. Okay, everybody calm down. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I beg you to forgive Mr. Blonsky's uh, in enthusiasm. This proves that in every instance, Mr. Blonsky could have broken free, but has chosen to remain in his cell. 
He deserves a future as a free man and a productive citizen. Thank you, Miss Walters. And as for Mr. Wong, just one. The Sorcerer Supreme, Master of the Mystic Arts, leader and former librarian of Kamataj. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that you've just admitted to facilitating a prisoner escape, which is a crime. I must depart. <laughs> must depart. Yes. Oh my God, you're pregnant with the Abomination's baby. And you're flying to a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Dennis Bukowski. Oh, yeah, no, you're gonna need that. Connecting the uh -huh. A and B story, nice. <laughs> Boys. Jen is gonna help us clinch this. My boy. Trust oh, he's. <laughs> she's gonna say he's terminally yes, deluded. Yeah, yeah. He's so, totally, totally deluded, and he yes, would he believes. believe yeah, yeah. about Megan the Stallion. How would you characterize Mr. Bukowski in relation to his romantic life? Self-absorbed, chauvinistic, conceited. Chris, do you think that Dennis Bukowski would believe that he could actually pull Megan oh. the Stallion? Yes, would absolutely believe that he's dating the real Megan Thee Stallion because he is truly that delusional. Mm, that felt good for her. <laughs> Under oath. <laughs> no, 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 I wish there was a way we could remove her powers and make sure she doesn't victimize anyone else. Oh, did Dennis Bukowski just give me an idea? That will stay between us. Most, <laughs> the, the heavy fourth wall in this episode so far. Yeah. We hereby grant Mr. Blonsky's release on parole effective immediately. Yes. Mr. Blonsky is prohibited from turning into abomination indefinitely and is ordered to wear an inhibitor in perpetuity. Thank you. Thank you. Jen, I'm in your debt. Yeah. Spiritually, of course. Just stay out of the news. You might want to reconsider that. I mean, they're going to write a story about you one way or the other. You know, better to be a part of it, really. Mm. So now, whether I like it or not, I am forever She-Hulk. Great. We have to take a break. When we come back, She-Hulk shares her diet and exercise secrets. <laughs> oh, She's sorry, like, sorry, what? Yeah. yeah. Uh -uh. Oh, wait. Fuck <laughs> me. Did you guys rob an Asgardian construction worker? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Ask for it. Go, go, go. Once you turned into She-Hulk, I couldn't pierce that nasty green skin. Damn it. Boss is going to be mad. Who's their boss? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was that just her seeing her own reflection in the car window? Yeah. Just... Just your signature there. <laughs> and then just initial. Good. <laughs> oh, God. oh my God. Oh my God. my last lawyer? I will kill for you, Megan Thee Stallion. Dial it back. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, that I just mentioned that was probably the heaviest fourth wall breaking we've seen. At but least I think it was the most effective. The most, yeah, it so far. It was all really well done there. Um, Wong's appearance was great. I love that I like specifically was like, oh, I know, like we're reactors and we just are trying to spoil ourselves with yeah. cameos. And then she like her first fourth wall break was like, all right, listen, I know you want to see a bunch of cameos, but like. <laughs> This is my show, so chill. But we got people. a bunch of cameos yeah. all the same, which was hilarious. Well, you got and Wong awesome. and you got uh, Megan, Megan the, the Stallion. Stallion. Yeah, uh, but still, that was fun. Um, yeah. Wong is not, I don't know. I mean, it, maybe that was all we're going to see. I think that yet. might be it. I don't know if we'll see him again or if there's any reason that we need to see him again. But yeah. 
but we know we're going to see some other people in this show, and it is to some extent going to be the cameo show, which I'm fine you with. You think so? I mean, we know that Charlie Cox is coming. That's true, yeah. So that's going to be a big one, and I mean... There's always the possibility that we're going to see any number of other people as well. Do you so think it's I'm more okay likely that. that Charlie Cox will be the lawyer for another superhero from another firm that that she's going to have to like you know battle in court? She's going to have it's, to battle. All Charlie, things are possible. I mean, it's obviously like going to be a lawyer connection. Matt Murdock. Like, are they going to be colleagues or are they going to? Are they going to be yeah. foes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we don't know. Are and. With that, you know, with that said, you probably, they probably wouldn't even include, like, the Daredevil. It'll probably just be Be Matt Matt Murdock. Murdock. Yeah. I would assume so. Especially in the light of that, her comment, like, guys, this is my show. Let's not be worried about who else is going to show up. Um, Well, her her identity might be public, but some superheroes, including him, I still have you know, secret identities. Yeah. So. I almost saw a, not necessarily a commentary, but, like, her paralegal was, like, you know, you know, holding up iPads and iPhones and there was a lot of like, you know, internet gossip yeah. things and like, you know, a lot of hashtagging, a lot of, and all of that. And I, it was a little bit of a commentary on the, like the, the, the fourth wall breaking in general is very, uh, modern made a, like, you know, TikTok, Megan the yeah. stallion doing the trick. It's very like the, the commentary on like talking to yourself in the mirror or sure, talking to yourself sort of in, in your phone, or, having, yes, having yeah. that, like, um. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Is that like a lot of people are like in their device, like looking at themselves, or you know, the sort of self-reflective nature of internet culture. Yeah, and I thought, yeah, yeah in that way that like everybody's fourth wall breaking in that way, and that like we're talking, like right now, I'm talking to an audience, like right, and like, hey I'm, guys, hey, you know, YouTube or whatever. It's that itself is yeah. very like meta, like um, yeah. that there's this. I was so happy that they took it to that level, though, because honestly, until tonight, I felt that the fourth wall thing was a bit gimmicky and that they had kind of shoehorned it in there because it's in the comics. Yeah, much more functional. This this was much more functional. This really was very, very well handled. Yeah. Um, We both laughed out loud during that first fourth wall break this episode. Yeah, because she literally took her hands off the wheel. You could see traffic still going, the car still moving. It's not like a time freeze. It's just like... No, it's literally like... Which most four wall breaks are like that. It's almost like like, I'm an actor in a show right now. It's not just that... The Zach Morris, the like, all right, time out. Everyone freezes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotta... Yeah. That's... I like that. It was just really well done overall. Bit of a slow paced episode overall, I yeah. thought. There I was mean, also like one or two moments, particularly where like her previous colleague was like first meeting with the other guy, where like we, I could tell you and I both got confused for a second where we were like, Wait, Oh what yeah, just the happened? shapeshifter like, when the shapeshifter was impersonating him yeah, for a minute we didn't get it. That. was a little bit unclear at first, so it was kind of like it, not necessarily slow, but I, we, we just didn't have much to react to for a second because yeah. we were very like I felt like we had more dead zones than usual. Yeah. In this episode, there was just sort of a a, a slower pace yeah. overall. Or, like, um, I didn't necessarily have a, like, giggle reaction at the end of a moment where it was just sort of like, huh, okay. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But in general, this might have actually been one of my favorite episodes so far of the three, I would think. Um, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I did. I enjoyed it, even though it was slower and just, I think... Yeah, it had moments that were high points for me, but sort of was a slower, a slower thing overall. And... Uh, it remains yet to be seen, like because last week everyone was like, "Oh, the seven pen pals is going to oh, be the Thunderbolts, yeah, and it's going to be creepy. that." It's, obviously, well, it's clearly not, not the Thunderbolts; the it's a little cult. But, Although we do know that will be something. You know, in it's the very future, interesting because it's clear that he can control himself, at least to a certain degree. Yeah. Right now, he's proven that in the court scene mm-hmm. in his parole hearing. Um. So he did say he was he, indebted to her, too, so right. now we're like, maybe he'll come maybe, back as a good guy and help. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. He did say that, and it seemed like they put a button on that, so, like, they made a point of that. Yeah. But there's still, so, I mean, I still don't trust him, because yeah. this is still a character that we know as a bad guy, and this wouldn't be the first time we've seen a bad guy effectively manipulating public opinion. Mm-hmm. And there's something super sinister about this weird little cult that he wants to start. That's not going anywhere good. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I still don't really know what his agenda or his end game. If he has is. one at if all, other one. than literally just trying to, because there might be more potential, not necessarily for him to screw up, but for someone else to corrupt him, and like right. he was to begin with. Like right. I mean, it could go any number of ways. Like they but... said, they were giving him an inhibitor or whatever. It's like somebody could, like you know, yeah. Bruce had his own. I just don't think that's the last we've seen um, of him, and I don't. 
yeah. necessarily trust his intentions. And there was like, this is the third episode, and we finally got that like, you know, the uh, the, the goons that stole the Asgardian weapons or whatever, and right. we're like, and she, we got a brief little uh, She Hulk kicking ass scene. Because there really hasn't been, other than that first episode with that horribly edited desk throw right. fight. It right. wasn't really a fight where it was like, with this the enemy yeah. just like, it was weird. But that was like the only real sort of like action sequence. Well, and again, so just important to point out, she taught them, the, she taught the, them the a lesson, fight, but she didn't significantly hurt any of them. You know, they all climbed back into the car yeah. relatively unscathed. It was another but unclear moment at the end there where it was like, the boss isn't going to like this. So yeah. who's their boss? So we were like, who's the boss? And then we thought we were going to like maybe get a hint of who the boss was like or something like maybe they were in that car. Waiting I feel like or, the boss or, is somebody we know already. Oh, though. clearly it's going to be. Yeah, maybe. But I just don't, I'm not I don't have a clear idea of who I think that's going to be. Yeah, I, there's there's a few possibilities. I saw some people in previous the last previous episodes being like, hmm, they don't trust her her paralegal friend. Like she could potentially be a a hidden enemy um, hmm. that that could go against her. Or uh, obviously, there's the 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 law firm head guy in general who continues to seem kind of. Right. I don't know. Like it's I don't know. There's. I also think there's a possibility that the boss could be somewhere we know. Someone we know from another context, someone we know from outside of She-Hulk, sure. like another, you know, cameo character. Yeah, because clearly they were trying to extract Hulk blood from her so that they could get Hulk powers themselves or whatever. I guess maybe they right, and know. they couldn't pierce the skin once She Hulk. Because Bruce Banner would, was explaining earlier where it's like, well, it's technically their genetic signature is what allows them to be able mm-hmm. to be the Hulk, and so it's like it would have to be. You can't be a Hulk without being a. Member of, of that yeah, family, you have to have their genetics or whatever. Uh, yeah, They've got some of... kind of science experiment that their boss wants them to do. Yes. So the question is, who do we know from any property, really, any Marvel property, yeah. that is handy with biochemistry and has nefarious intentions? Yeah. And that this could is the, be a number of people. This is a Star Wars, you know, channel, and I just re- am reminded of like Grogu and Moff Gideon trying to like steal Grogu's blood to like study Force right. users and stuff. But it's something similar. It's like he doesn't right. necessarily the full, know the full extent of how Force users work, but he still wants to experiment. He wants to on study him. with it. So yeah, that there you go. Maybe pre- somebody you know do some weird human experimentation. Something nefarious is going. Yeah. Clearly, they're not. Um, and it's it. It comes in a nice package with her doing fourth wall breaks where they're like not necessarily like it's easy for her to kind of just make a commentary um, and it all just sort of like makes sense in that way. Um, but it, it um, I'm enjoying it nonetheless and I think yeah. uh, um, I'm excited for next week. And I, I, I keep asking this, but there's you said there's nine episodes. There's to- nine episodes. OK, so we're really technically a third. We're, of the Yeah, way we're through. still like, sort of close really, to the beginning. We're still. Can, yeah, long, is, long road to run here. Yeah, we haven't even hit the like mid stride yet of this yet. So uh, I'm expecting more conflict next week because, like, as I said, I was expecting conflict with the abomination scenario. Like that was something like the uh, they won that that guy's money back in court, and that was like a win. And I was like expecting there to be a loss next because it was like, oh, you, you we don't want to just have win, 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 win. That doesn't make sense. But um, it seems like they're saving that maybe for the next episode. Mm-hmm. Like, what's this boss gonna be? Who's um, it was a little unclear to me though, like that last shot where it was like, like very subtle, her reflection in a car window is what it looked like to me. And I was like, what's yeah. the point of that? I, my it was like a self-reflective was moment. that she was just sort of co- confronting herself, and, yeah. and, you know, in this moment where she just had this big fight and, you know, tossed a bunch of guys around yeah, and then confronting the image of herself and what she's become. Which she's still not entirely comfortable. Yeah, and with. she had said earlier in the episode, like, I just want to be like a normal lawyer. Yeah, again, anonymous like, also lawyer who also Hulk. happens to be a Hulk, but you know, her whole life has changed. But then again, she's... it's like that's that scenario that like all women say that they're like, you know, they dread is the like walking alone on the road at night and getting literally attacked by by right. goons or whatever. Like right. that it's you know, you carry mace in your purse or whatever. But here she like forgot about being She Hulk for a second and she literally goes like, Oh yeah. I can be Hulk right now and defend yeah. myself. So yeah. I wouldn't think that it would cause a like, I don't want to be the Hulk. It was just like, dude, that saved you saved your own life by being yeah. Hulk. So like, it seems I just like, think a, that like she hasn't fully reckoned with it. Hulk yeah. You know, be, yeah, yeah. in that moment, maybe, but she still hasn't like fully dealt with or processed that for herself. So that was, that was what I thought that was, was okay. just a little moment of like, look what I've become. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's true because she had mentioned in the bar earlier, she was like, somebody wrote on my car, monster defending a monster. So maybe she, like, when she, even though she can defend herself, she has that, like, ah, yeah. like I'm a monster. Like, she feels right. like an ick level about it. Well, and, like, look at the reaction that the parole board just had when the abomination exactly, out. Exactly. They were immediately terrified. Even though he wasn't doing anything, he arranged his shoes, he spoke in his normal voice and said, you see, it's just me. Mm -hmm. You know, he was as non-threatening as a giant monster can possibly be. Yeah. But they were all cowering and terrified. And I think she sees like the potential for that in Is that essentially a crack herself. in her armor? Right. That, like, you know, her... the need to exert control. I don't know if you noticed or not. Time. I didn't I didn't like at first I was like, is this just uh Tatiana's acting and the way they were directing her? Mm -hmm. Um but in that uh Emil Blonsky scene with the Pearl board um, she seemed very obviously for obvious reasons. She was like frantic and like unsure. Yeah, of Wong like, was late. This is a very crucial trial. Yeah, and I was like, well, wait There's a minute. Up until this point, Jennifer Walters has seemed very self assured, mm -hmm. and like here it was the first time where it was like she was very unsure in the moment. Um, and I was like, oh, is that kind of like sort of like like I was saying, is this like her reflecting on herself in the car mirror? Is like a is that's the weakness in She Hulk? Is like she's not necessarily sure of what's going on, or like she doesn't know mm. how to deal with it. It's it's more than you can. I, uh, yeah. that's a little metaphorical. Well, I've I guess, made this the, no, I've made this analogy a million times in reference to a million characters, but there's still this Jacob wrestling with the angel aspect of it. She still fundamentally would rather not have this power, mm. and until she really deeply like fundamentally deals with that she's going to have this conflict all the time yeah yeah, yeah. so uh once again a uh post credit scene and this time was just uh making the stallion twerking it pure comedy a, pure yeah. twerkage <laughs> so yeah i guess it's true there really are going to be post credit scenes after every episode and i'm i love that i'm hoping maybe there will be a like a like a really really good reactionary one that is gonna be like a like the whoa, end of, end like of the last whoa kind, kind of, of moment yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or a preview for something else or who knows yeah could be anything we'll yeah anyway excited to uh, see what happens next week guys let us know in the comments below what you thought about this episode don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see fully unedited reactions from our channel go over to patreon.com/jedi jive and check it out we will see you in the next reaction peace. bye guys.